Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and season 3 Star Trek Picard episode number 5 Imposters. This show and this season is absolutely wonderful. I mean, it just keeps hitting it out of the park. I'm where the heck was this in the se in season 1 and season 2? They should have just gone around with something like this for for, for three seasons. Um, anyway, forget about that. Uh, Imposters basically sees Jack having visions of killing members of the crew. Is he a sleeper agent? We don't know. There's something definitely wrong with him. And he does tell his mother, uh, Beverly, that yes, um, there is something wrong with him. We see him struggling. His eyes become red. People are talking Cylon. Uh, that he's a Cylon. Not really, but yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of cases of him having visions of killing up killing some of the crew of the Titan but in the end he doesn't actually kill them uh, meanwhile we see Riker handing back command of the ship of the Titan to uh, Captain Shaw who's recovered mostly from his injuries and uh, in his own wisecracking manner he tells he's a bit of a smart ass so he does tell him that by the way I must tell you I have informed Starfleet and they are coming here they've sent a ship to uh, to connect with us and uh, I'm going to let the three of you, meaning Picard, Riker and Seven of Nine, who he does reinstate after checking with her. And then he tells them, uh, get your uh, bullshit stories together. You know, he's basically a jerk, but yeah, we, we kind of love him by this by, at this point. He's an absolutely uh, fantastic addition to Star Trek. And I think, well, I say he's already been in Star Trek before. Uh, that is Todd Sashwick, but Stashwick, sorry. Uh, however, the character is uh, is new, and he's amazing. And then uh, the ship comes. The ship is the USS Intrepid. They intercepts the it intercepts the Titan, and the lead investigator is walking onto the uh, Titan. And guess who it is? This was having the the rug pulled from underneath our feet, because we had no idea. Because Michelle Forbes is back as Low Laren. This time, she is a, a commander, having been reinstated into Starfleet. So the story goes, as she tells them, um, towards the end of the Marquis, uh, uh, Marquis, uh, um, to the, towards the end of the Marquis, she gave herself up to Starfleet uh, willingly. She gave herself up, and then she was put in prison. However, after she finished, her, I mean, towards the end of her prison sentence, they realized that she, as a as a person who's been involved with terrorists, she might be pretty useful to Starfleet. So they reinstated her slowly at first, and then gave her much bigger uh, roles to play. So now she is an investigator for Starfleet, and she and Picard have. I mean, there's a lot of uh, animosity between them. But especially Picard feeling betrayed by her. <clears throat> You'll have to go back to TNG season uh, 7, is it? Uh, towards the end of the show is when you actually find out why, I mean, she, you know, why there's that animosity. She does betray him and join the Marquis, turning him back on Starfleet. And for Picard, it's a double blow. It's a double betrayal because, one, she betrayed him and she also betrayed Starfleet, which is everything that he stood for. Um, Riker and her also took at each other, <clears throat> although in their case, um, she did pull a phaser on him the last time that they met when she was defecting to the Marquis, but he kind of understood uh, her point of view, so he doesn't have too many grudges against her, but yes, the two of them, Picard and Ro, excellent, excellent acting, and great job in bringing her back, by the way, because uh, Michelle Forbes didn't actually, she, if you know this, Michelle Forbes was actually supposed to be the the female lead in Deep Space Nine, but she did not want to commit herself to tele, to a television show. She knew that being in being part of the main cast, she might have to commit to like you know five to seven seasons. And she wanted to give her a try in movies. She was getting some options, so uh, she gave it up. And that good point, good thing, but it actually gave us Nana Visitor as uh, oh god. Uh, Major Kira, so almost blanked out of the name, uh, Major Kira Norris, so therefore, you know, all's well that ends well. 
you know, I love Nana Musica and I love uh, Major Kiran Nariz, the character, but I would have loved to have seen, um, you know, Michelle Forbes continue in Star Trek. Uh, she did show, show up in Battlestar Galactica as an admiral. I have seen her in a couple of other TV shows, but she would have been fantastic to continue in uh, Star Trek. Uh, anyway, we got her back, even if it's only for an episode. Uh, so finally, she and Picard duke it out with each other. They, they, they talk and they air their grievances. And she takes him to the, uh, to the holodeck uh, where they do pull guns on each other, faces on each other. But then she tells him, uh, she knows that the changelings have been, have infiltrated Starfleet. She doesn't trust anybody. She's got two um, agents on, on the floor, on the ground, sorry. One is Worf. So, she, so she's Worf's handler and Worf is the handler for Rafi. So basically, um, you know, she can trust them, but she doesn't know who else to trust. She does trust Picard, though. And, uh, you know, she tells him that she's had her suspicions. She's been doing a lot of investigation. She's kept it quiet. Uh, and she doesn't know who else to turn to. So she gives uh, Picard her, her, her Bajoran ring, which initially Picard had actually come in and why you're not wearing the ring. Uh, she gives it to him before she you know, sheds a tear and then she leaves. But the two security officers who had come with her onto the Titan, she tells them that plans have changed. They're going back. They're not taking Picard. They're not taking Riker with them. However, on the shuttle back to the... Uh, uh, back to the uh, intrepid, uh, the the two security officers who are actually changelings, uh, they you know activate a bomb, and she is unable to actually. Uh, they put a bomb on board and then they they beam themselves back onto the Titan. Uh, she is unable to uh, dis uh, uh, you know she is unable to disarm it, so she dis and she can't get beamed out uh, unless she comes closer. Thinking that there's not enough time, she decides to sacrifice herself and steers her um, uh, steers her shuttle onto the uh, nacelles of the Intrepid, uh, crippling them uh, for for a while at least. And then the saboteurs, the two um, two changeling, they come onto the uh, ship. They get two others, and uh, they plan to take hold of Jack. And that's when Jack kind of switches. So is he a sleeper agent? We don't really know. He switches and he kills all four of them very easily in fact and then that's when he tells his mother that you know I, did, I think there's something wrong with me. Uh, meanwhile on the uh, uh, on the uh, the La Serena uh, Worf and uh, Rafi their, their storyline continues but basically they're trying to find out who is behind stealing the uh, who's the mastermind behind stealing the uh, the two weapons that is cost uh, like you know the main weapon that has caused a lot of de uh, de uh, like you know um, a lot of devastation uh, that is the uh, the portal weapon and there's one more that's been stolen or there's multiple that has been stolen so they go and find out Sneed's boss basically the Vulcan criminal Krin and that's strange to have a Vulcan who is a who is a, uh, a mafia kind of don but uh, yeah this time there's another guest star who does a bang up job uh, Kirk uh, Acevedo, I think that's how you pronounce the name. Uh, I wish they actually had it on the Wikipedia page. I think it's Kirk uh, Acevedo. I just have a quick check. Kirk Acevedo, yes, that's the actor. I've seen him in many shows, including on Arrow uh, and some other shows as well. He's uh, like, you know, I think he does a really, <coughs> sorry about that, I think he really does a better job over here than the other stuff that I've seen him in. Um, at times, uh, I think he was hamming it up in a lot of this thing, but he plays a, you know, a perfect villainous kind of role, and I hope he's there for many more episodes. Uh, so, they go there, um, and they, uh, you know, initially they try to put a trap for, uh, for Krim, but uh, unfortunately, he is already he's already aware of uh, what they're planning to do, uh, and then uh, he makes you know with his with his people he makes Rafi and uh, Worf uh, duel them like you know he forces them to have a duel in which it seems that Worf is uh, killed but he actually isn't and then they 
turn their tables on the uh, on Krims when killing all of them and taking curb, uh, <laughs> taking uh, Krim away from there to give them more information about the attack. And then um, finally, as we see in the last scene in the, in the episode, uh, Picard and Riker have used the uh, uh, used the Bajoran earring, which is actually um, a, a, a device that has got that has stored a lot of data in it, and then she sees she, her entire investigation is actually saved onto it. That's why she gave it to uh, Picard. And when they are checking it, they manage to contact uh, Worf. Basically, contacts them through it, and uh, they are actually you know, three of them reunited once again. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I mean, uh, and then Rose is killed, but uh, at least Worf is now going to be reunited with Kirk. Uh, sorry, with Beverly. Uh, Picard and Riker uh, probably in the next episode and Rafi is also going to join along with them and we get it but still no Diana, no Johnny, no Data I mean not Data but at least uh, Lore is not there I am uh, I want more episodes I want more episodes I can't I can almost scream for it I really really want this um, and I think Ed Spielers is also doing a really bang up job as being this uh, you know there's something the mystery surrounding him is going up like who the heck is he did they do the changelings actually grab hold of him at one point and uh, you know use him as a did some experiment on him or something and is that why uh, you know he's having these uh, trouble visions and not able to sleep and uh, by the way Krins tells him that there is an AI that's actually protecting the Daystrom institution and he figured out a way to actually get into it, but it's protected by a powerful AI. And is that Moriarty? This seems to be the consensus. I don't know. Probably is. And it's it's gearing up to be absolutely fantastic. I don't want the show to end. And this is basically giving us almost TNG season eight. I wish we had the rest of the crew in. Come on, man. This is this is absolutely fantastic. I love this season. This season kicks the ass of season one and season two. Oh, man. I can't wait for next Thursday. Well, I actually don't watch the show on uh, the episodes on Thursday. I kind of watch it on Friday night. Or in this case, I actually watch it on Saturday night because Friday I kind of fell asleep. I was really tired. Um, I think I fell asleep by 11 o'clock. I was actually trying to watch it at 11. But then I laid on my bed and then that's all she wrote. I was completely asleep. So I give this episode a 9 out of 10. Really, really awesome. Uh, I really loved it. Of course, um, it's a little bit of convenience that we get Ro back. But seeing her on, on the screen made my day, made my week uh, absolutely fantastic. 9 out of 10 for me, guys. I can't wait for Bounty, which comes uh, next Thursday. Take care and uh, live long and prosper.